Some time back, I was in the assembly with a sister congregation, and they did something that sparked me to preach this lesson. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. And what they do is they quote, they responded back to the preacher after he did the first phrase. I want you to do that. Okay? God is good all the time. All the time. Now, they must, I think they do that often because they want to be reminded from time to time and often that God is good. We need that lesson. We need to be reminded about that lesson. So we need to think, well, what is good? Well, you can get a dictionary definition. It has to do with pursuing that which is beneficial and supportive of a life. It is good as it relates to uh, the well-being of a human. It might have to do with how it connects with your moral conscience. And what matches that is good. So we think about good and we see these definitions and yet I don't think that really helps us much. Because that's rather subjective. Because what might be good for me may not necessarily be good for you. And what you might define as good, I might say, well, that doesn't sound good to me at all. And so that subjective idea of goodness we must pursue in order for us to understand what it means to say God is good. So let's think about these two concepts for just a few minutes. God is good. God is good because that is his nature. Jesus made this statement in Matthew 19 and verse 17. And he put it this way when he said, you call me good. In other words, he looked at those people and he said, you refer to me as good master. In fact, they had just addressed him in a question with that phrase, good master. And he goes, you call me good. But then he makes this statement, but there is none good but one. And that is the father. Now, of course, he was wanting them to understand if the Father is the one good and you call me good, then you are admitting that I am God. That's what he was trying to get them to see. And so that was his point. But I want you to see another point. The fact is God is the only one who is good. In other words, God is the real good. See, here's how it works. Let me ask you a question. Would there be anything good if there was no God? Could we call anything good if God did not exist? Well, since good is a subjective term, then it seems to me probably not. Think about it this way. What does the philosophy of situation ethics say? It says, whatever is right for that moment and in that situation is right. There are no standards of right and wrong to be used all across the board. It's only right or wrong given a situation. Therefore, there is nothing good that we can across the board say is good. Isn't it interesting that those who say there is nothing that can be used all the time as a principle of good have actually just said there is something that can be used all the time, and that is that there's nothing that can be used all the time. They just made a statement contradicting their own statement. 
But that's what situation ethics does. It makes good determined by me and you. And therefore, it can't be consistent. How do environmentalists view good? Well, anything that protects the environment. It's just that simple. And if we wanted to get rid of other things to protect the environment, so be it. Well, that's one way. How about political good? What is political good? Well, I think we all know what that means. It means I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get elected. And once I'm there, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to stay there. That's called good. I don't call that good, but they call that good. So my point is, there is nothing good without God. How can we say that anything is good if God is not in the picture? God is the real good. In fact, because God is good, therefore I can know what good is. I can know what it means to be good. I know the definition of good because I see the nature of God. God is good. And since he is good, I can understand it. Now, what is the nature of God? James said, when you're tempted, don't say you're tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, neither does he himself tempt anyone. Here's what real good is. Not being tempted, nor tempting. None of us fit that category. That is God. That is real good. Therefore, what do we do? How do we define what real good is? Real good is that which is beneficial to the real goal of life. Romans 8, verse 28. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. In other words, every person who is with God and wants to stay with God, God is involved with them to work things out for the good, not to be good in the present, but for the good of that which is the goal of life, which is to be in heaven. Therefore, good is anything necessary, helpful to get me to heaven. It's good. That's God. That's who he is. So see, I can know good because God exists. If God did not exist, I would not know the term good. But number two, I can be good. Because God is good, I can be good. Ephesians 2 and verse 10, Paul wrote these words. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that beforehand he made for us. I can be good. Not because of me, but through Jesus Christ, I am good. I can be good. Paul told the Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, he said, this God who, who has been on our side this whole time, this God, I want him to comfort you with all that is good. Good. I can be good. You can be good. God is good. Therefore, I can know what good is. And I can be good myself. 
Because God exists and God is good. But number two, God is good all the time. All the time. If we're not careful, we can unknowingly create a problem with ourselves and with others on this topic of all the time God is good. For instance, when we pray and we ask God to bless the health of someone going through something tough and they are healed, what do we say? God is good. But what happens if they are not healed? Do we say, oh, he's not good? No, we don't say that. We don't go so far as to say, wait, I'm sorry, God's not good. But we might not say, God is still good. All the time, God is good. In other words, he is good when things seem bad. He's still good. Here's a statement I want you to chew on. It is not evil that evil exists. Chew on that one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. You mean it's, it's good for evil to exist? It's within the allowed will of God. Evil then can be used for good. Things that we call evil can be used for good. The problem of suffering, pain, disappointment is, a, is an obstacle for some people to the goodness of God. If God is really good, then this wouldn't be happening. So he's happening, so he must not be good. The question is, what kind of world is the best world to live in? Well, I think we would all agree that to be, to be human, we need to live in a world that meets our needs, fulfills desires, with free will, yet offering us challenges so that we can learn what we need to learn. Is that fair? I think that's fair. The best world is a world that is just like that. It is a world where we are free to do, where we're challenged, and where we can learn. Is the world we live in just the best of all possible worlds? Or is this world the only possible world? You know, it depends upon what you think about God. In Genesis 1 and verse 31, when he finished creation... On the other five days, he closed those days of creation saying, it's good. That's good. Oh, that's good too. And those were good. But when creation was finished, he looked at the whole thing and he said, this is very good. Now let me ask you a question. If there is another world than the one we're in that is as good or even better than the one he made 
then God failed. But if you believe that God is good, and if you believe that God is good all the time, then when God made this world, it's the only possible world for him to make. Because that's his nature. It's not as though God can choose between things that are good and say, oh, I'm going to do this one and not this one. He does what is good. We are the ones that look at things and go, oh, that's good, but that's not so good, and that's really bad. And God just says, here's good. We need to know that God is good even when things are bad. But number two, here's something else we need to know. God is good even when I am not good. He's still good. There are a lot of reasons why God is still good. One, he wants what is best for me. And he wants what is best for you. He doesn't want anyone to perish. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. So whether I'm good or evil, God is still good. Because he wants me to be saved. And God is good because... The last verse of the Bible reading of 2 Corinthians 5.15. If one died, then all died. Then he says, and Jesus died for us. Number one, that's God being good to us. You know what? Without God, you know what good is? Take God out of the picture and let's define good. Without God, good can be called selfishness. That's all it is. Because without the standard of God, then it becomes selfish. It is what is best as I see it or best for me in whatever situation. But God is good. And what he did in his goodness was he sent Jesus to take my place to die for me when I should be the one to die. Now that's good. Perhaps for a good man, somebody might dare to die. Jesus, because of God's goodness, died. And yet, death to us seems not to be good. Oh, but he didn't stop there. Because in his goodness, he sent Jesus to die so that he then could be resurrected to prove that God is good. No other leader of any other religious group on the face of the earth, not one has a being, an identity, a person who died and was resurrected and was seen after the resurrection by all kinds of people. No other faith has it. So why did it happen? Because God is good. And God is good all the time. So then in what appeared to be bad, the crucifixion of Jesus, God made it good so that he does the same thing with us in things that seem to be bad. He can make it good because that's what God does. And so today, we are people who believe that God is good all the time. 
we'll do it again. Jalen wants to do it again. We'll do it again. God is good. And all the time. I hope you believe that. And I hope that your belief of that and your acceptance of that will give you strength and courage in the difficult things, in the troublesome things. But then don't forget him because he's still good. Because around the corner, he can make it good when it used to be bad. And the best part of that was taking the devastating effects of sin and destroying it. So today, if you're under the effects of sin, that is, separated from God, because your sin, though the debt has been paid, your sin has not been remitted because you failed to obey Jesus. Believing in him and confessing that sin and saying, I, you know what? I'm going to change. And I confess that Jesus is going to be the Lord of my life. <coughs> then we can immerse you into Jesus. And in those waters of baptism, the sin is removed and done away. And then that's the bad that God made good. And when you rise from that watery grave like Jesus rose, your brand new life, a brand new person, ready to live a life of service to him who is good and wants for all of us nothing but good as defined by make your soul right before him. If we can help you today in some way, will you come as we stand and sing?